Well, greetings friends and welcome back. And unless you're completely new to my channel, you may have seen two, in fact, previous reviews on the Thrustmaster 16000M on my channel. In fact, the first review of this and the associated throttle was the first video I ever uploaded to YouTube. Now, I did a initial review, positive. I did a one year later review, also positive. Pretty much two years later on the dot, I started experiencing the same issue that quite a few of you in the comments section have raised, and that being that the twist rudder basically gave up the ghost. And it did it without warning, and it did it in the middle of a game. The way it presented itself was effectively that the, the rudder was as if it was inputting like this. It was basically twitching um, and going between probably about 20% to about 100% initiation or activation, or whatever you want to call it. Um, just through the game, which effectively made it impossible to play. And even if you then put in opposite rudder, um, it would just still think it's going that way or that way. It was kind of random which direction it decided to go. So being a good little consumer, I got in touch with Thrustmaster and explained that even though it's out of warranty, can they help me out with a solution? Can they uh, suggest a fix? And unfortunately, they kindly came back with, uh, this is not serviceable, there are no user serviceable parts, you can't get replacement parts for it, and it will just need to be replaced. To which I said, hooey! Now, I am not a, um, a tinkerer, a handy person in any way, shape or form, but I decided that for the sake of you guys and my own sanity, uh, I would do some digging into the problem. And it seems that you and I and the rest of us are not alone. In fact, the twist rudder seems to be the thing that always fails, or at least that fails the most on these sticks. Again, not being handy at all, I thought, uh, well, let's give it a crack. Now, I'll go through the entire solution for you here, including disassembly, what I did to fix it, uh, and reassembly, and of course, a test to see whether it worked at the end. Spoilers, I wouldn't be making this video if it failed. So, I've got my workstation set up here behind me. Let's get into it. You'll need a set of mini screwdrivers, ideally ones that come in a little tray. You'll use the tray later on, but especially you need the tiny, tiny one, second from the left. You'll need some masking tape or gaffer tape, something that doesn't leave a residue. You'll need some cotton wool buds, some isopropyl alcohol, which is a cleaning alcohol for electronics, and a fistful of screwdrivers. And depending on your strength level or frustration level, maybe a little mallet. You'll probably be tempted to use one of these. I would say don't. So again, the problem with this joystick is the twist rudder. So you'll need to just access the stalk of the joystick. First step is to just pull off the cover on the right hand side to reveal some screws. You'll see there's really one main screw that holds the other side, the thumb rest in my case, because I'm a righty, uh, in place. So once you unscrew that, you'll be able to take off the thumb rest and reveal some more screws. Now on the left hand side of the joystick, you'll see a number of screws, all of which you have to undo, starting off with two in the main stalk, one up the top and one down the bottom. There's also one in the trigger, which is a bit hidden away. You'll also have to remove the trigger later on. So what you might want to do is grab your own HOTAS and uh, follow along with this tear down and repair so that uh, we can all do it at the same time. As I say, it's a bit of a long video, so grab yourself your favorite beverage and uh, settle in. As you'll see throughout the teardown, there's sort of two shorter black screws and two longer black screws. The shorter ones go into the handle, the longer ones go into the hand rest down the bottom. This is the bit where you rip out the small screwdrivers that you have in your tray, and you use that tray to store your screws. Because if you lose these, you'll be in a world of hurt. So now we come to the two screws on the thumb rest. But the two down the bottom are the removal screws. You may be tempted to use a drill at this point. Don't do it, put it away. Now in my case, the rear screw on the thumb rest was actually stuck pretty fast and I had to wrestle with it quite a bit. Hopefully you don't have the same problem as I did. Again, these are the two longer black screws. So they are distinguishable from the ones that go into the stalk of the joystick. There is also a silver screw, but you don't have to actually take that out in order to remove the hand rest. There's also this tiny screw just behind the trigger on the left hand side, which you have to take out. And now it's time to use the miniest of the mini screwdrivers that you have to poke out the rod that secures the trigger into the assembly. Now, you can use whatever you like for this. Uh, I use the mini screwdriver because that worked for me, but uh, make sure that your diameter is thin enough to fit through. 
Now, the rod is just a simple rod, uh, but it's very small, so don't lose it. Once you've taken that off, the trigger just comes off very simply, and you can put that aside. Well, that's essentially the easy part over. Now it's time to take a swig of your beverage because the next bit gets inordinately fiddly. First, you need to wrestle apart the two halves of the joystick. Uh, you'll find, as in my case, the left-hand side came off much more easily than the right, hence where it is. The middle button up the top is also not connected to anything, so you'll need to be careful when you remove that, especially because of the little rubber hat that's underneath it, which effectively gives it the spongy feel but also serves as a spring. I call these the nipples of doom because, as you'll see in a minute, they love to fall out, so be very careful because uh, if you lose them, the buttons won't work anymore. And, of course, they're not glued in in any way, shape or form. They're just friction fitted in. So once you've exposed one side, you will see the circuit board sticking out. Uh, that's not particularly exciting for us right now. You'll also see the eight-way hat that's sitting in there. That remains attached to the circuit board itself. So gently prising the circuit board out towards the left-hand side, you'll see it pops out of its little holder, and then it kind of just hangs free, and the other side of the joystick comes off. Now, despite my best advice, I'm going to poke this one out so you can actually see what it looks like and how easy it is for it to come out. It is a tiny little thing, but uh, and it's also relatively see-through, so just be very careful that you don't lose it. As I say, it serves as both a spring and a contact plate for the button, so uh, yeah, if you lose these, your buttons won't work anymore. And yes, it was a nightmare to get it back in. So now the circuit board kind of hangs freely off the back of, or off the front really, of the joystick, and then you see this square thing on top, which is in fact the sensor for the twist rudder. Now, unfortunately, the way it's constructed, you cannot actually remove it. So we're not going to do that here. We're going to do a simpler version. So at this point, get out your isopropyl alcohol, put it on your cotton bud, and then you're going to apply it to the top of the sensor. The main point about the alcohol is that it is a, is a cleaner and it also has a very low evaporation uh, threshold, I suppose. So it will evaporate very quickly. Make sure you make a huge mess like I did. Now simply just rub it on top of the sensor, uh, try and get it in there. Think of this as if you were greasing up a mechanical part. Then I gave it a bit of a twist, hoping that whatever dust or muck or whatever's in there is holding it back or preventing it from sensing correctly would be moved out or otherwise cleaned. I also twisted it past the 45 degrees just to make sure that uh, I got as much of the isopropyl alcohol in there as I could. At this point, because the wires are attached and obviously twist as you twist the rudder every time, just make sure that they haven't come loose. And if they have, then obviously you'll need to fix that as well. Just before we put everything back together, you can see the circuit board has a little button underneath. Uh, that is a micro switch which actually connects over to the trigger, just in case you were wondering where that goes. There's also these three contact points that you'll see on the back of the circuit board. Uh, these are obviously your three points for the buttons on the top and the eight-way hat, which remains attached. So then it's time for reassembly, which is, uh, yep, just about as fiddly as you think it might be. The first thing you need to do is try and get the circuit board back into whichever side you choose. I'm going with the right-hand side uh, without losing the nipple of doom. So that's going to be your biggest problem because it will want to curve under the pressure of the circuit board. And as you can see there, I've done it wrong. You can try installing it upside down. You might be lucky, but uh, that didn't work for me either. So eventually, if you've rolled a 16 or more in your dexterity, or you've got three hands, poke one of your little screwdrivers in there, lift up the hat, uh, and then push the circuit board in, making sure that the thing's in there, and give the button a bit of a test. The next step is to find the grooves and indentations that correspond with the stalk of the stick and going into effectively the hand grip or handle itself. This can again be a little bit fiddly, but just take your time with it and eventually it will snap into place. Now, believe it or not, once that side is on, uh, that was the easy bit. Because now we have to get the other side on whilst trying to keep the nipple of doom from falling out and not being able to see it or raise it in any way, shape or form. So, uh, yeah. And of course, try and make sure that the nipple of doom is actually still attached and then, you know, poke it out of its holder like I just did. Thanks. The eventual solution I came up with was to use another cotton wool bud and some tape and put the cotton wool bud right where I'm showing you here. Use the tape on the top and the sides to secure the button in the unpressed or upward most position. And then eventually uh, I was able to insert that side that way. To make sure it was attached properly, I gave it a little bit of a poke and it seems like it was actually in the downward most position at this point. So I had to add another piece of tape to the side to ensure that the button was actually raised and taped in place 
rather than lowered. So holding the tape on the side, raise up the button and then stick the tape to the side like I'm showing you here so that it actually holds in the upright position. And there's Frankenstein's monster ready to go back in. So again, be ultra careful not to knock anything out, not to pinch the wires and not to lose anything and not to forget about the uh, bottom button like I just have. You'll remember the bottom button also has a nipple of doom, which falls out, of course. Uh, so you'll need to be careful of uh, putting that one back in and making sure that it actually sits in place. Now, essentially, the button just slides into the groove where it used to live. So that part is not too hard. And then back to Frankenstein's monster. Now, again, this one's a little bit fiddly. Give it a bit of a wriggle. Eventually, it will just snap into place. What you want to do immediately is push the buttons and make sure that they feel spongy and that the nipple of doom is in place underneath. And obviously that your eight-way hat still works. And then you repeat the process for reassembly. I did this one first uh, because I was kind of nervous of knocking the stick and having everything fly into the corners of the room and then having to put everything back together. So yeah, not something I wanted to do. And then the order of screwing things back together is kind of up to you. I chose to go with the two on the handle first. This again is the short black screw, not the long one. The long one is for the hand rest. Then I decided to put the hand rest back on. So just pop both sides on either side of the stick. Make sure you have them on the side that you actually want them on. And then screw in those two long screws down the bottom. After that's all done, just readjust your silver screw to the position where you wanted to have it. Don't forget about the teeny weeny little screw next to the trigger. That one's easy to forget, but you'll need to put that one in. And while we're here, we may as well put the rod back into the trigger assembly to hold it back into place. So just pop it lightly into one side of the trigger so that it holds into place. Put the trigger assembly into where it's supposed to go and then push it through. For this bit, you'll want to use a thimble or a flat piece of metal or the side of a screwdriver or something, uh, unless you have titanium fingers because it hurts. And of course, check everything works. Right, we're nearly there. Time for the thumb assembly. Take the screw out, pop the thumb assembly on and screw it on from the other side. And finally, the flimsiest part, which just pops into these two holes, is on the other side of the stick. And we're done. And of course, the moment of truth. Now plug it back into your PC. What you're looking for here is the RZ axis. And twisting the stick, you can see that now it has a completely smooth motion of travel and uh, there aren't any glitches at all. And obviously, while you're here, test everything else because you've just had this thing ripped apart. So make sure that you haven't stuffed something else up while you've been fixing the other thing because that'd suck. Well, friends, there you have it. As you can see, it is possible to repair this uh, by yourself. I would advise that if you're going to undertake this, um, do it at your own risk, obviously. RBJ did not tell you to do this. Uh, but uh, given that there's no other solution other than to you know, get a new one or obviously send it back if it's in warranty, which I would highly recommend if you're still in warranty period. But if you're out, then uh, this little tinker job might be the only way that you can get this thing back to fighting fit status. And I want to say one more time that I am not a handy kind of person. I wouldn't consider myself handy. I certainly wouldn't consider myself a tinkerer. Uh, my level is like, I don't know, two out of 10 or something. So it doesn't take any particular skill to do this repair um, other than probably a little bit of patience. And I'd recommend pouring yourself a favorite drink and uh, setting aside an hour or two to get it done. And let me know in the comments below how you went and whether this solution worked for you. And otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, feed your dog, pay your taxes. If you're in the US, please vote. Doesn't matter who you vote for, just make your voice heard. And that's all I'll say about that. And uh, I'll see you out in the blue or the black. See you guys. Mm -hmm.